what's going on youtube it's castle scope back with another video today i'm working on a kyrie irving poster design i'll be showing you the final touches and techniques that i add to my sports designs that make the audience have that wow factor when they see it for the first time here's the kyrie canvas and this is what i have so far at this point combination of the blues and oranges you even have a little bit of green for your tertiary colors it makes it very interesting for the eye to look across the canvas and see how colors are changing and moving within so what I want to do is add these light flares, make these green because I have all this blue and yellow. So now if I introduce a subtle green color, that's just an effect, that's going to add even more of a pop to the image. This layer on screen blending mode, just so I can get rid of most of the black. And then after that, I'm going to use levels. It's going to hit control L to go into levels and keeping it simple. You're gonna move this midpoint to the right on level so that you can drag out some of those dark shadows and blacks. It looks just a lot more, you know, actually faded onto the screen blending mode. So once you have that done, that's pretty good. And then you can make a layer mask in that layer mask icon. And then you're gonna paint black on the layer mask on the outside. So make sure that your color's on black. You can hit D to go to your default colors and then just make sure black is on top. And then you're just gonna paint out the this sharp edges if you can still see them because you don't want that in your final piece that's that's a no-no i'm going to change it to a green tone and i'm just going to keep it simple and i'm going to hit command u to go into my human saturation if you're on the windows it's going to be control so then you can just use this hue slider and i'm going to turn these lights to green find that green tone that looks natural enough and not even on color eyes just using hue not on colorize. You could try out colorize if you want. It can kind of work the same exact way in some ways. For this one, I'm just gonna stick to Q. But then we're gonna hit OK. I'll brush out a little bit off of his eyes just so it's not protruding his eye like that. Actually swoop this one so that it looks like it might be going behind him. That looks like a kind of a cool effect right there. Could honestly bring the saturation down just a tad bit. Now I'm gonna add the hue and saturation layer onto Kyrie. So go to your semicircle, hue and saturation. If he wasn't inside a group, you'd have to click it, but we're gonna set it to colorize, bring our saturation up a good amount, and then slide our slider to match this green tone. Make sure your green tones match. And I'm gonna bring my brightness up. Now I'm gonna right click on the hue and saturation icon so I can use blending options. From here, you're gonna use the underlying layer slider. And what this is going to do is going to give you a nice blend to with whatever adjustment that you're using. So with this adjustment, I'm using green. So I'm gonna hold down alt or option if you're on the Mac and you're going to drag this slider so that you get a very nice blend off of the mask. And then you're gonna hit command I, invert that mask. And now take your time, have a brush on a low flow and also drop your hardness down to zero almost and then you want to just brush on the layer mask right here with white so that you can start making this glow the tip that i use when i'm going to be brushing on a little bit of light is i want to make it taper off what's going on y'all my name is Kyle scope I'm opening my marketplace shopscope.com now what is this digital store going to be it's going to be a store where i put packs up that you guys can purchase that are going to be helpful in your digital creations your digital artwork if you want higher quality projects and renders, grab a kit. My work is trusted, including the NBA, UConn men's basketball, and Florida State football. If I paint this, right, and it's like one large block, what I like to do is make it taper off. So see how it has that sharper edge at the edge of the light? That's called tapering. And that's what can make uh, your light look a lot more realistic and also interesting is tapering your lines. So taper your lines. Boom, I got that straight line, now I'm gonna let it taper. So do that within and really just have the light react to where it actually is hitting his body. Don't go too crazy and try to make everything green. Just cause it looks cool, I understand. And I get excited too because of how cool that lighting can look. That will give you the best result. And everybody has different styles of how intense they want their lighting to be. Add another hue and saturation layer. So I'm just gonna command J or control J to duplicate this, delete the layer mask off of it. This layer, I'm going to drop the lightness down because it doesn't need to be as bright. So I'll just bring it to back to zero. Invert this mask once again. And this is just gonna be a softer uh, glow. So it's not gonna be as bright but this is just to have support glow because you can have your glow. It's going to be more edgy and on the edges. But then you also want to have some support glow. So even on this one, go back to blending options and then just bring this slider 
the back. You have more room to just have that be the supporting glow layer. It's not as sharp to the highlights of the subject. One thing you don't want to do with 3D text is just plop it in there. If you want to see how I made this 3D text in After Effects, I can do a tutorial. You guys got to make sure that you hit once. Let's hit one like on this video and I'll drop a element 3D text tutorial next week. So I already had a few adjustments here. I had my levels adjustment, human saturation for just some of the soft light that's coming from the sky. And then I also had a curves layer just to brighten it up in the middle. See how I have this yellow light right here from the sky. I want to make sure that this is included here. And also I have this light from the Oriental house. We're going to do the same thing. We're adding a human saturation layer and we are going to put it on color eyes. So the ground's going to be hit by a little bit of green. So what I'm going to do is go back to Kyrie and I'm going to take the first greens hue and saturation. I'm going to copy this layer and I'm going to go to the ground. I'm going to paste that layer right there. So deleting the layer mask. Now we have a green ground. Let's check the blending option. Make sure it's looking straight, ready to go. We're going to hit the layer mask invert once again. And this time, right click when you're on the brush tool with B and then right click and bring the orientation of the brush down to the ground, paint the ground a little bit from where these lights were hitting it. Think about things that really are going to make sense to a piece. Don't just do something because it looks cool. It'll save you a lot of trouble. I like to hit crevices that I can already see have highlights on them. It just starts bringing out the piece more. If you ever want to add some exposure on the top of your layer with an exposure layer, inverting it, and then add those parts that are very bright, add a little bit of that exposure mask. It'll help bring even more variety to the hue and saturation that you had already painted. You're going to hit command option shift E or control alt shift E. And that's so that we can merge the canvas into one layer that's visible. And from there, you're going to convert it to a smart object. Now let's hop right into camera raw. I like to go straight away to the tab right here that has two circles on it. And this is like a preset tab of some looks that you can get. I've been really liking the portrait groups tab. It's been pretty dope. Also cinematic too gives you some nice results too. I started this one because it just has a nice feel to it where it doesn't bring your color to a point of no saturation. It lowers a good amount of saturation, but also makes it more cinematic looking with lifted shadows. So I'm going to put that there for PG 01 and drop my opacity to around 30. Now from profile, I browse and let's take a look at the vintage tab here vintage nine is calling my name look at everything here put a little contrast have those shadows come back just a tad color grading and i want my shadows to be more of a purplish pinkish tones will be somewhere as around i guess it was pretty good somewhere around the reds and we're getting a dynamic look you can always hit p if you want to hit a preview and see what your colors are looking like on your canvas. And if you want to adjust your sliders for your skin tones, go to your color mixer, oranges, anything like that. That's how you can add some sauce to your sports designs. When you're thinking about your finishing touches and how you're really going to captivate an audience to look at your piece and go, wow, that makes me want to get up and design. Because at the end of the day, that should be the goal that you have as well as loving your own art. Consider supporting me on Patreon as well. It truly helps and you guys get access to all my project files, including this one will be up. I drop monthly packs and assets that are gonna help you guys in your designing. Make sure to hit the subscribe button guys, hit that bell, and I'm excited to bring you guys some more videos coming up. It's been Calciscope, the artist of athletes. I'll catch you guys in the next one.